environment, uh, the fading will be much diminished. Um, this is a super high-tech solution um, that, you know, I can't be putting all of our spruce in anoxic environments, but um, certainly there are some solutions that work for some media. And then I'll just, you know, touch on uh, new media, a whole different area. Uh, you know, when I'm called upon to do a condition report on uh, SCD, it's, yeah, okay, yeah, uh, I need some help. And, and I get help, fortunately, we have a lot of a uh, variety of professionals at the museum. Um, and we have indeed a growing collection of uh, videos of electronic media. And again, we can talk about this perhaps together. And then finally, um, we're developing tools. The photograph information record is a tool to help conservators. Um, this is a sample set. I have, I have an example here with me of various types of digital prints from digital files, some of which no longer can be made. That you know, you know the evolution of digital printing has, has been moving very rapidly, but we're still getting those digital prints as artworks in our collection. And this type of thing helps conservators, archivists, librarians, curators, uh, enables them to identify um, the type of print that um, is coming in, which of course is the first step in, in preservation. Anyway, I'm way over time, I'm sorry. I just have to say a word that about the photograph information record. Thank you so much. It's like a huge help to the field for us to have it, and we are using that here at the museum, too. Um, our final panelist is Max Yella, who's been head of the Special Collections Department at the UWM Library since 1994. Prior to this, he was the Public Services Librarian for Special Collections at the University of Delaware from 1985 to 1994. As an adjunct associate lecturer for the UWM Department of Art and Design, he teaches book arts concepts, book arts survey, independent reading and research, and lectures on book arts concepts and theory throughout the curriculum. In addition, he curates several ex exhibits a year for the department and serves as the official library liaison to art and design. He is also an adjunct instructor in the UWM School of Information Studies, where he teaches history of books and printing, and books, culture, and change. Yella's research uses media and information theories to understand and articulate the book as an art medium, the presence of the book in culture and society and its epistemological consequences, the intersection of print tr tradition and the emerging digital environment, and how artists do research. He's the author of numerous exhibition catalogs, including contemporary artist prints and books, The Shape and Color of Research, and fifth international book and paper arts triennial. He is also the author of the artist book La Benedicion, designed and printed by Karen Heft at the Arcadian Press in 2009. Max. Thank you, Lisa. I too want to thank uh, the Photography Council. I appreciate you uh, hosting this, and Lisa. Thank you very much for inviting me, and Coco Mulvaney for her hard work and making sure we're all on our toes. So where's that contract, Max? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to eat for dinner, Max? <laughs> so I appreciate you, you keep staying on me about that. It was very good of you. Um, and thank you all for coming out. I appreciate that, too. You know, when I was first invited to uh, speak here to be part of this panel, I, I felt a little bit like the odd man out because I, I know about this much about photographic processes, maybe just a little bit less about uh, conservation of photographs. And I, I said as much to Lisa, and she told me that she was inviting me to participate in the panel, not because I might know about photographs, but because of my understanding of the book as expression, the book as um, an expressive space. So I had to think about this, and there's lots I could, I could probably talk about relating to books and images and how they 
relate to each other, how they function with each other, and that's really narrow my focus. The relationship between book and photograph is extensive and, and it's really complex, and, but at the same time, it's quite natural. So what is the nature of the relationship between the photograph and the book as a potential venue for photographic presentation as a space? This relationship has a really long history, probably as long as the history of, of, of photography itself. Um, and I, I don't intend to offer a, a 10 minute uh, synopsis of that history, so I refer you instead um, to Martin Pars and um, Jerry Badger's very engaging uh, categorical two volume exploration, The Photo Book in History, which was published by Faden uh, in 2004 and then in 2006, the second volume. Make sure my students write this down. Mm -hmm. I have a few of my students here tonight. Um, what I'd like to do is offer a quick review of the potentiality of the book as a presentation space for photographic imagery. So to narrow the focus of the discussion, I will exclude books and magazines that are about photography. Um, I, and also books that use photography as illustration for text, such as um, this uh, illustration by uh, Joel Peter Witkin for a text by uh, Blake. And although it may be germane to the subject, and perhaps we can talk about this uh, during, the, uh, during our uh, panel discussion, I'm also gonna exclude the photographic scrapbook from the discussion. My goal is to understand the presentation of photographs in the context of book. Uh, this is not as easy as it sounds because in our culture, we have very specific ideas about what a book is and what it does. And we also have very specific ideas about um, the photograph as art and what it does. Part of the dilemma is tied up with our millennia old tradition of the book as a storage device, as a storage medium, a place where we put information for random access uh, later on in the future. To gain access to a photograph, we only need to retrieve its venue, right, which is happily stored on our bookshelf. But for the past century and more, the relationship between photograph and book has been so much more specific and symbiotic than that. When I think about the history of the specificity, the general, the general poss certain general possibilities emerge, and I think of four of them. Uh, and these may also include, these possibilities may also include other possible hybrids and variations. The first is actually quite traditional. We might vernacularly refer to it, vernacularly refer to it as the photography, the photography book a book that serves as a, a venue space uh, for work of a single photographer or a group of photographers. In this context, there may not even be a conscious consideration of the book at all as a, as a space. Nevertheless, the very choice of this specific space as presentation automatically alters the experience of the photographic image for the viewer. The book is an intimate space, it's a, it's a performative space. The same images presented in the same sequence in a gallery or a museum do not have, I submit, the same presence, meaning, or experience when presented in the book form. And a good example of this is, is this book, uh, Cartier-Bresson's iconic 1952 publication, The Decisive Moment, which was already referred to by Michael. On the face of it, this book is simply a monograph of Cartier-Bresson's best work over a very long career, and yet this publication is among the most influential of 20th century photography books. Even its title, both in English and in French, Image à la Sauvette, uh, have become classic expressions of, of photographic inquiry. The book's success is based not only on the collection's careful editing, but also in its unity, encompassed by the concept of that phrase, the decisive moment, reflected in the perfect image. The second possibility may be referred to as the photo book. Here, the photographic image begins to be considered specifically within the context of the book form itself. In his 1945 uh, book, Ballet, Alexei Brodovich 